Hello and welcome to Shelve, Store, or Sell, presented by Crushing Comics. I'm your host, Crisis with a K, and I'm here surrounded by some of my shelved collection, but this show is not about that. It is about my collection that is in short boxes. I call it the Stacks, and there's over 140 of these boxes, and they contain all sorts of stuff, some of which I haven't seen since 2017 or prior from when I packed it all up to move to Wellington. So the question now is, do I want to keep it, do I want to display it, or is it time to get out of here? Now, I will give you a spoiler. I know that this box is probably all keep, and that's because of what the box says. It is box number 1070, and it says image A V to B L or B I. I can't quite make it out. Now, I have a complete collection of every in continuity Wildstorm comic book. I was a huge fan of Wildcats back in the 90s, and I decided that one of the things I wanted to do is just comprehensively find every story that had ever been told in Wildstorm continuity, get it all together, and map it for binding. Now, along the way, because I can't do anything halfway, that started to encompass a couple of other characters uh, and, and, and franchises. So I know that it's got some dark Top Cal stuff in there. It's got Pit. I think it's got some Extreme Studio stuff. So it's really broadly image. It's not just Wildstorm. And this box is packed. I mean, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to pick it up and show it to you. Oh my goodness. It is packed front to back with these books that I have ready for binding. So let's take a look with the caveat that I have not read a lot of image past like 95. So a lot of the stuff I bought because I want to read it, it's not digitized, you know? It's never been collected. A lot of it's not available digitally until DC fully takes over Wildstorm. So a lot of this stuff, the only opportunity to read it is in floppy, which is why I have it here. So let's start out with what looks like a pretty big hunk of the authority. Now, the Authority, of course, is kind of one of those Wildstorm comics that took on a life of its own because a lot of people enjoy it and have read it and certainly reference its style without even having been along for the things that spawned it. But the thing that spawned Authority, of course, was Stormwatch. It started out as Stormwatch was it was part of Wildstorm. Right? Wild was Wildcats, Stormwatch was Stormwatch. But then Warren Ellis turned it into the Authority and it became this totally other things. So this is the authority. Oh, you know what? It's a good thing I gave that intro, but this is not actually mostly the authority. Because look, I have this authority issue number 21 on the top here. But then the next thing I have in the stack is the monarchy. So the monarchy was a spin-off title from authority. And I think I have it all here. Let's see. I have number two, number three. Yep. So I have the whole run of the monarchy here. And I think I must have authority number 21 because it's meant to be the first book in that map. Like maybe monarchy branches off from there. And that is why I have it in there. So I have 9, 10, 11, 12. And then I have the authority number 24. I know, it's shiny. I'm working on it. There we go. Uh, but then I have yet another spin-off title, The Establishment. Now, I don't know anything about these titles. The Establishment says it's, it's the team is Edgington and Adlard. Off the top of my head, I do not know who that is. Um, it's got a JVC out on the back. It's on map paper. Ian Edgington and Charlie Adlard. Is Charlie Adlard one of the artists of The Walking Dead? I want to guess. So this was released in, when was this released? Does it have Indisha? It does. November 2001. And it is an imprint of DC Comics at this point. And all it says is if you're not watching them, they're watching you. So I assume that this is some kind of spinoff from the authority that involves, I guess, maybe like some kind of MI6 or, or British. I mean, it's got the Union Jack on the cover there. Um, spinoff. But, you know, in some spreadsheet somewhere, I have a complete map of how I intend to bind this. I think now that I'm thinking about it, I wanted to almost do like a, a flip book, which is kind of crazy. But I wanted to do this Authority 21 to Monarchy 12 bound this way. And then I was thinking of doing um, the establishment like bound upside down. So I actually and, and get imprints on both covers because the establishment runs for 13 issues. So it's about like a 26 issue bind. It could be done. And then behind it, I have two issues of the same comic, um, Wildstorm Spotlight featuring Majestic. 
But I wonder if Majestic tangles with the establishment in this issue, and maybe that's why it's here. I, I don't know. Uh, clearly, I spent a lot of time mapping this all out. Gosh, I just love this. I mean, I'm just looking at these pages, and I just want to stop the show here and just read this book. But that's not my job right now. So, uh, that's a keep, and it's a bind. Now, I have not read The Authority. It's funny, this is one of these things that I've gone in on on faith. I have no actual knowledge of these runs. I might hate them. All of my Wildstorm love is heavily predicated on loving Wildstorm through like 95, 96, and I kind of just rolled the dice on the next 10 years of The Authority uh, and, and everything. The Authority and, and all of Wildstorm, and I guess I'll just find out when I find out. So the next thing in here is The Kindred. Okay, so I know why this is next, even though it starts with a K. The Kindred was a team-up series between Grifter and Backlash. And I actually have read this because it's pretty early on in Wildstorm. And then after the Kindred, there's actually also a Kindred 2, which maybe is in this too. But these are basically early Backlash appearances. So I also have um, Stormwatch number 4, which has got some early Backlash. Stormwatch number 8. I don't know why I have that one in there because I feel like that's mostly... Ripclaw and introducing Rain from Gen 13, but there must be a Backlash moment. And then the next thing I have in here is all of Backlash. So Backlash is, he was the creation of a number of people. And I remember in my read of it, I, I read everything from the first like two, three, maybe even four, I want to say three years of Wildstorm on my blog, crushingcrisis.com, back at the end of 2016 when I first started my Patreon campaign. And I remember the beginning of Backlash, it's a little like, like, it's just written by this gang of guys, and they don't really seem to have, like, a really clear direction on who he is or where he's going to go. But um, he's he's unique. He's not Wolverine. He's not Gambit. He's not Batman. He, he's he's visually interesting, and, he, um, and he's just not quite any one of these other characters, which a lot of the early image characters really were. And so there's something kind of interesting about him. He's like kind of a secret agent, but he's kind of somebody who's gone off on his own. He's got a little bit of an attitude. He's a little bit of an older guy, but he's a little bit of an upstart, which I think is kind of a signal of like how they really hadn't decided entirely who he was going to be at the beginning. But it's compelling. And I have all of it here. Uh, it continues into this next run. I, I'm being careful not to take them out of order because I know that I pack them in the order that I would want to bind them. So we have Backlash versus Spider-Man here in a rare Wildstorm and Marvel crossover. There's not a ton. There were some Wildcats and X-Men crossovers. And this um, continues through all the Backlash stuff and associated Backlash things. I think there's like another series that ties into Backlash at some point. He's also in some of the end of um, Deathblow. And Deathblow, I've actually read Deathblow, I think like almost the entire series, or at least the first whole major arc of the series. And it's really interesting because um, Deathblow is very much like a Marvel-y kind of character, but he, and he has this team seven of people that he used to work with, which are very much a spin on kind of Wolverine's past as it was being introduced um, with the team that he was on with like Sabretooth and Maverick right before Jim Lee left. And it's, you know, it's obvious that he ported a lot of that stuff over with him to Wildstorm. But it really just works a little bit better in Wildstorm. Like, I don't, Wolverine is such an outsized star in Marvel that that um, camaraderie never totally sells for me in Marvel, and it works much better in Wildstorm. So this next stack, it's a mystery, because I have the cover board turned around. Oh, this is, so this is Wild Core. This is actually Wild Core, an image preview issue. It's funny, you know, back in the day, you would get all these preview issues from the store or from like Wizard Half or whatever. And you would be like, whatever, like you didn't even think that they were valuable. They were just something that you would, you know, pick up. But now they are some of the hardest comics to find because exactly because people didn't think they were that valuable. So Wild Core is where Backlash and his cast head after that initial Backlash series. And then there is a Backlash, Backlash and Taboo one shot. I think it's an OGM. Yeah, it's square bound. I don't know if you can see that, but it's square bound. And uh, oops, don't want to get it out of order. And then there's another Kindred series, Kindred 2. And then there's Jet. I don't really know what Jet's deal is. Like, is she Backlash's daughter or, or what? I don't, I don't know. Uh, so all to be found out when I get these found. So next, I deviate from the Wildstorm stuff, because I have Bad Rock here. 
Bad Rock was meant to be kind of the um, the Thing style back breakout character from Youngblood, and he he kind of did in that Lee Field used him a lot. I don't know that he was ever as fun or as charming as Thing, but um, he makes a lot of appearances in a lot of books because he was like the character that they was really trying to franchise. So I have Bad Rock, Bad Rock Annual, um, somebody teaming up with Bad Rock, Gri Grifter and Bad Rock, uh, Bad Rock and Company here where he's just hanging out with a lot of other heroes from that universe. Uh, and then Big Bruisers, a one-shot where it got together a lot of the big, tough characters. And I think I have like four copies of this because I wanted to put it in each of the binds. That purple guy in the front is Maul from Wildcats. And um, I, I'm not even sure who that middle one is. I'm trying to remember. But as you can see, you know, I did my research. And I'll tell you, this all started because somebody gave me this comic for free in an order. It's, um, it's Bad Rock and Wolverine. And, you know, it used to be when you would order a lot of comics from, like, an eBay seller or on Amazon or from somewhere like Mile High, sometimes they would just throw in, like, an ultra-cheap book that they weren't going to sell otherwise. They'd be like, here, have an extra comic. And it always made me frustrated because I wasn't going to, like, throw them out. And a lot of the comics they sent weren't even things you would hand to a kid. Not that I necessarily um, had a kid who could read comics at that point. But I hate to throw a comic away. So I'm like, Ugh. now I'm, like, burdened with this comic. Like, what am I supposed to do with it? But, of course, that one was actually in a universe where I have a little bit of interest. I'm like, well, maybe I'll just get everything by Bad Rock. And then I have a huge hunk at the back here. Oh, okay, cool. So this, I think there's something on the shelves here that actually goes with this. So this is Bloodstrike, which is another um, Leafield series. It's part of his Extreme Comics. I forget if Bloodstrike, like, was a spinoff of Youngblood or what? I definitely never read these. But this is interesting because Bloodstrike was one of the comic books that participated in that um, Images of Tomorrow where they uh, looked forward 20 to issue 25, but they did it like really early in a run. And that is a formative moment for me. You will hear me refer to it all of the time. I really loved it. And that happened in Stormwatch, which is one of the things that I was reading at the time. But they also did it in two extreme comics. So it's funny because it wasn't just in Wildstorm books. And that was how I became aware of Bloodstrike. I think they also maybe did it in Brigade. Um, but then the thing is, I don't think Bloodstrike actually makes it all the way to issue 25. Yeah, so it goes to 22 here. And then there's issue 25, which had actually been released much, much earlier. But I don't think there's a 23 or a 24. And it's a similar story with, um, let's say it's a similar story with Brigade. Now, let me just try to, hold on, let me figure out what's going on here and get this all out of this package. Okay, I've done my research and I figured out what I was trying to say. Bloodstrike ended with issue number 22. It never picked up 23 and 24, so it never linked to 25. But then in 2017 and 2018, I want to say, they brought on Michael Fife, who's known well for Copra, to come in and fill in those issues so it would link together. So he did a Bloodstrike issue zero to kind of like reset the stage. And then he did issues 22 and or 23 and 24 that would link up seamlessly to that issue 25. And so I got the collection of it because I figured I could just put the collection after, but I maybe also got the floppies. Let me, hold on. Yeah. So these are probably the newest floppies I have in my entire collection um, because I, or, and they're probably the only floppies I've ordered from abroad since I've been in New Zealand because I wanted a way to put these into that same bind with all of the other ones. So I have um, zero here and I have some totally, oh, I, I have two copies of zero because it had an alternate cover. I probably just bought a lot like on eBay that had both. And it looks like I actually have two covers of each one. So I have a, t a 23. And then I have another cover of 23 and 24 and another cover of 24. So I have two, I have three copies of this run. I have that trade paperback I just showed you. And then I have two different versions of each of the issues. Now here's the big question. Is it the same trim size as the preceding Blood Strike issue? Because that's not always the case, right? Like older comics can be subtly different in trim. So here's Blood Strike 22, here's zero, 
they're really, really close. It's, it's a hair different. I don't think the difference is enough that I would make a difference in binding. So uh, I can now put those in the box. They've been here on the shelf. This box has been down in storage. I guarantee you I have not opened this box a single time since we've moved to New Zealand because I haven't done any reading of Wildstorm since we've been to New Zealand. And so now, finally, these books that I got since we've been in New Zealand to add to this box can go in this box. So it's kind of, a, it's like bonus store. Um, I, I didn't know that I was going to get to store all the stuff that I was going to get to store. So that is the end of this box. It clearly went through BL Bloodstrike, and it's just one more edition of these Wildstore comics and Extreme comics, and uh, eventually we'll hit some Top Gal too, that I don't necessarily know a ton about, but I there were things that I saw from afar at the time, and I had so much affinity for them, and unlike things that you see from afar that you can now read on, you know, DC Universe and Marvel Unlimited, there's no other way to really get all these comics in one place. Many of them have never been digitized. And so that's when I went a little bit wild and made sure I would have them all for binding. I'm sure once I get through some of my other reading projects, many that they are, perhaps I will make my way to this one too. I kind of want to wait until I get them bound to read them because like that's part of the fun and having them in these tomes to be able to pick them up, be like nobody else in the world has this artifact that I have. But then it's like, how old am I going to be by the time I read them? Maybe it's time to start just slotting in the reads now and I'll get to the binds when I get to the binds. So that has been another uh, issue episode of Shelf Store or Sell here on Crushing Comics. I promised it was all going to be returned to storage, and now you see why, plus those additional nine issues, right? Three copies each of each of three issues that are getting added to store. So please continue to join me as I continue to work through the stacks, figure out why I've got it, why I love it, and if it can stay here in my collection. And until we get to talk about that again, please be well. Bye.